Welcome to Mass Creations, high quality web and software development. Wherever your vision, bring it to life with Mass Creations based in Bury St Edmunds. From web or mobile development to SEO and IT consultancy. Whatever your vision, get in touch with Mass Creations and join the list of companies from Terrace Life to Balm Music to have worked with them. Call today on 07896 904 571. That's 07896 904 571. Or head to masscreations.co.uk and access their 24 7 live chat. Mass Creations. Proud partners with Talking Town. In 1981, a small powerhouse of a football club did the unthinkable. Eleven men entered the Olympic Stadium in Amsterdam. Eleven immortal heroes left. This is their story and this is our history. Away by Arndt, Tyson! Oh, what a start for Edwin! Mariners putting it on, Johnny Walks in there! Johnny Walks! John Walk equals Al Caffini's record of 14 goals in Europe. That's awkward. Oh, what a great save by Paul Cooper. Flag is up for offside against Brazil, and Ipswich win the Europa oh. Cup. Has just played his 667th senior match for Ipswich Town, and his reward for that unstinting service is the Europa Cup. The reward for his team's enduring efforts this season. Tonight. We sit down with Terry Butcher and Russell Osman to remember, discuss, reflect and celebrate our history. This is the Talking Town UEFA Cup Anniversary Special. Hello again, my friends, and you are my friends, and welcome to this very special video from Talking Town. Thank you all for joining me. A few uh, little house parish notices to get out of the way. First of all, don't forget, Adventures of a Tractor Boy. You can access this on Amazon. Um, let's get it to number one. Uh, Mass Creations, Brace and Edmonds, bespoke web and software developers, and Away Day Beers. Uh, grab your ITFC Legends Pack for $13.99. Links in the chat. And that's what I'll be doing this evening. I'll be opening this fantastic bottle of Hoppy Robson. The best there was, the best there is, the best there will be. Uh, and sitting back and enjoying this as a fan. And really listening to two greats talk about history. And I'm not talking about Matt Phillips or the Cruncher. I'm talking about, of course, Terry Butcher and Russell Osman. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, as a as a younger fan, this is what we're all about. Um, Mr. Matt Phillips, I know you're absolutely buzzing. Um, I can't talk. I'm too excited. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I get that. I get that. And, and, and I can't blame you. I am. Which is why I've uh, got this wonderful bottle of beer. And I'm going to just, just really... Listen and enjoy it. Um, you, you, stole, nice... you stole my gag there. I put on Twitter, come and celebrate the UEFA Cup with me two town icons, not me and Rich. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> Talking of your other icon. Why are you not drinking Butcher's Bandage tonight? Well, because I, th I, think, I think he is. There it is. Uh, I've got mine is on it? order. Mine's on order. Is this cool? 
This is coordinated beer drinking, you yeah. see. He I've said got, he was drinking my, um, which is a cup of coffee. I've got my Pioneer cup out, look. Nice coffee. There we go. <laughs> Uh, Ed Sheeran in the building. My first game was 85. This is a fantastic night, Luke Hume. I interviewed Russell a few years back for the for Dictate the Game. Great chap and a thoroughly lovely guy. Uh, so my job this evening will be, in addition to just drinking this wonderful beer, will be just putting the comments on the screen, making sure it runs to time, just being a producer, sitting back as I did for when you sat down with Frank Yallop, um, having a beer and being a fan and just having a real geek moment. So this is my moment to say I love you all. Enjoy it. I certainly will be. I should, look, we're in charge now, Rich. We've got the keys. The dream has come true. Well, do you know, BT and Hunter were called Bacon and Eggs, weren't they? By, uh, yeah, Bacon Sir and Bobby. Eggs. So I'm thinking, you know, Russell and Terry both played for England, so we're going to call them the full English. So let's bring in the first half. Let's bring in Russell. Let's bring in Russell first, number five. Russell, good evening. Good evening. Welcome good to evening. Talking Town. Welcome. Nice to be here. Where's my bottle of beer, by the way? Yeah. You you're you're you drinking red wine, aren't you, Russell? I am. Nice. Of course, we I have the beer. We need to get Russell's you on the got some news for us. Russell's got some news. He's celebrating tonight. Tell everyone oh, why yeah. he's celebrating. Go on. I'm celebrating the arrival of uh, my first uh, grandson, um, oh, so Osman, who was born this morning, weighed in at uh, £6.10. Lovely. Fantastic. Great. Congratulations to us all. Congratulations. Yes. We'll drink it's, to his health yes. all night. A tractor boy? <laughs> Um, well, they're based up north at the moment, but I'm sure his father will persuade him to be a tractor boy. <laughs> and you, are you excited by the, the news of Ed Sheeran on our shirts? I hear you're a fan, Russell. You're an Ed Sheeran fan, right? I went to the last day of his uh, last concert on the Monday. It was fantastic in Chantry Park. Uh, it was a wonderful, wonderful night. I think he's been absolutely fantastic for the club being there. Uh, as often as he can, supporting them like everybody else through thick and thick, really. Um, <laughs> yeah. And hopefully he's, uh, in a way, he's put his money where his mouth is. He's, he's a supporter that is prepared to to sponsor the club big style. And I think everybody's got a nice little boost from that. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, we've had, had it with the new owners coming in, haven't we? And Paul Cook coming in as well. Feels like yeah. pieces of the jigsaw are coming together a little bit now. It is. All we've got to do is get about 30 song titles into this conversation tonight. <laughs> it's nice, Matt, it's, it's a bit of community spirit, isn't it? Because obviously yes. Ed's come from the area and it's, it's nice that like he's done really well and he's putting a little bit back into the community now. And it's yeah. it's really good, I think. Yeah, so and it's brilliant that he thinks that the football club is such an important part yeah. of the community. He supports the community outside of the football club across Suffolk uh, with his... Um, his donations for charitable events, etc., and auction stuff that he donates. So it's very nice that he looks at um, Ipswich Sound Football Club in a positive manner and is prepared to support them um, yeah. that sort of extent. Now, before we, because we know Terry's got ties, coaching ties to the club right now. So before we bring him in, Russell, I mean, we're about next season will be our third season in, in League One. Does that sort of make you feel sad to see that? Very. <clears throat> Very sad, disappointed, disappointed in some of the football that uh, we've had to endure this year um, and last year. Hopefully this season will finish on a successful note for them at uh, Portman Road. Mm. And then we can look forward to a whole lot of changes that will um, boost everybody in time for part of next season and hopefully that will be the season that we get out of this this league yeah. fingers crossed fingers yeah. crossed okay without further ado let's bring in your defensive partner now he played for england at world cups he's played for rangers he's won trophies but we're hearing that his biggest accolade is to be the cover star of adventures of a tractor boy by graham brook a book that russell also has there we go i do have it it's on kindle <laughs> so without further ado the legend that is terry butcher Hello, Terry. Good evening, gentlemen. How are, you? How are you? Yeah, I'm not too bad. It's just a shame that um, I've been in the well, been in the game forty odd years, and I'm remembered either as a, a fancy dress outfit uh, with my bloody head, or as, on the cover of Graham Brooks' uh, book. So, you know, it's, um, <laughs> all that hard work has really paid off, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> We've got the virtual red carpet out for both of you guys. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 
So, but look, we're here. Can you believe it? 40 years on, UEFA Cup win. Can you believe it's 40 years? Maybe you haven't played in that era. Maybe it does feel like 40 years to you guys. What do you think? Well, I don't think well, Terry's changed much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, you've not aged much. Look at me, for goodness sake. No, I think, it, I mean, this time 40 years ago, I think we may be 2 0 up uh, in, the, in the first leg. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it was an incredible season, um, the, one of the longest um, ever, the most games that um, teams have played um, with a small squad. Um, it was just brilliant. And to be an Ipswich fan, to be in the middle of all that was just spectacular. Um, mm. I, you know, at the time, you, you think you're going to rise and get, you know, have better moments and more magical moments. But, you, you know, no matter where we went and what we did, I think that that was definitely the best. And, you know, we didn't realise what we had, I think, until it started to, to yeah. uh, disintegrate when, when Bobby when to Bobby left. Yeah. What was the expectation yeah. going into that season, Russell? At the start of the season... Um... Well, I think we'd we'd only lost one game in the last 24 games or something from the season before. So we finished off the previous season very, very well. And then we got off to a flying start um, the following season, the 80-81 season. You know, we beat Leicester the opening game. And it's always nice to get a few points under your belt as early on as you can. And then we we went off on a, on a great run. Um, and our, our style of play... Uh, just seemed to suit everybody that was in the team or in the squad. And that was something that we worked on quite a lot, as well as our, our fitness, um, because we always, uh, well, it was always instilled in us by Bobby Ferguson, Sil Lee, that, you know, you, you, you had to be fit. You couldn't play the game unless you were properly fit. And we were, we were fit. And uh, the expectations were that we would have a good season. We didn't realise how good a season we were going to have until you start playing the, the European games and progressing through there. But the European games sort of finished for three months at the end of uh, November, December. And then you've got this gap through till March again when they pick off again. Um, but it's an awesome season. Great season. If we you, played concept, game, you? you played every game that season, didn't you, Russell? And you only missed two, Terry. So... Obviously, yeah. there must have been times when you were... Was there any games that you were like, on the verge of missing or was it just were you just lucky with injury all through the season? Uh, I think there was once or twice that uh, I probably rode me luck a little bit, but those were the days that Terry made sure I got through the 90 minutes OK. And that's the sort of team that we were. You know, you could, you could rely on your teammates alongside you to give an extra sort of 10, 15 percent if you were sort of struggling with a little bit of an injury. I remember covering for Terry a few times when he broke his nose and we couldn't get him off the pitch and then he broke his leg and we couldn't get him off the pitch and, you know, so <laughs> we had to look after each other now and again. Just just to set the context around, because we've got a lot of younger viewers as well, the 79-80 season, Liverpool won the title, Man United finished second and Ipswich Town finished third. So that's what got us into that into that UEFA Cup. So we, I suppose we were going into that this season with like the, the momentum, really, under Bobby. Yeah, I, I thought we were. We, like I say, one good good run at the end of the season, providing you can keep that nucleus of players fit and healthy and ready for the start yeah. of the next season. Then, you, you, in a way, you've got a head start on other people. Yeah. And we got a, a flying start and that gave us the momentum to to get into the season wholeheartedly. I mean, remember like, at the start, at the start of 1881, <clears throat> the start of that season, we went 14 games unbeaten. And yeah. only lost to Brighton 1-0 and that was a major surprise. But it was, it was that momentum. And the, the, the best thing about um, the two Bobbies, Bobby Ferguson and Bobby Robson in particular, when, when we won a game, it was straight, your feet were straight back on the, uh, down, down to the ground. You know, you're right. You just had to forget about that result, and you, and they made you forget about that result because, as Russell said, it was hard through hard work that you you then look forward to the next game. And let me just say, we played on the Saturday, had the Sunday off, which we normally had a little drink or two to celebrate, and then of course, and then uh, on the Monday, we would be up the gym. If there's a big grass area above the above the changing room, a big astroturf area above the changing room, so we go in there. It's about three quarter size pitch, 
and then we'd be downstairs doing uh, either in the gym or or running. So there's three groups. So you you did like the circuit where you where you ran, then went into the gym, and then went up and then went up the the top to to play football. And then in the afternoon you're back running. And then on the Tuesday morning you play games or play whatever you did. And then in the Tuesday afternoon you 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 were running. And then you couldn't do it anymore. You couldn't you literally crawled off the training field. And then had Wednesday off, and then you prepared for the games on the Friday and the and the uh, Thursday and the Friday. So it was full on, and it had to be full on. But it, what it did, it just refocused and reset you completely. So you you didn't get too big for yourself. You weren't swanning around and things like this. And the most important thing was, if you did swan around, you never got caught. So that was pretty valuable. Yeah. <laughs> what's, but what's there, there were many games where we'd have a comfortable victory. And you come back into the changing rooms at the, the end of the match and you sit down, you're having a cup of tea. And the next thing you know, either Sir Bobby or Bobby Ferguson's right in your face saying, what about that stupid mistake you made in the you know 78th minute when you gave the ball away? That could, and if, oh. <laughs> yeah, OK, fine. We've just won 3-0. And the first thing he says to you is about the mistake you made. But that's how it was. It was tough school. Was was Bobby Bobby Robson's obviously got this kind of grandfatherly reputation amongst all global football fans, but behind the scenes in the dressing room of you guys and on the training field, was he? Was he? A, I know Ferguson was the tough guy, but was he a tough guy as well? Your story, yeah, 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 he was a tough guy. I mean, if you see more than a manager, the the Bobby Robson documentary, he's given me a right rollicking. We've won the game, but he's given me a right rollicking because I made a mistake, and that was that's a great example, like Russell says, of what he of what he was like. Nowadays, they have all the analysis and the data and the clips and all that sort of thing. But you didn't, you didn't need it in those days because you had the, the minds and the brains of the two Bobbies. But, and they were like computers. They really didn't forget. They didn't forget at all. I mean, two or three months down the road, they still tell you about a bad mistake you made against um, Man City or wherever it was. They just, they just were determined to keep your feet on the ground and make sure that you, they, they got the best out of you. And it was, it was great, I think. Been in the academy, and Russell's been in the academy. You see kids of today, and if you did that to them, and if you went up, they, you would you would destroy them. Um, whereas we were tougher, and you had to be tougher in those days. And we always just said, "Well, yeah, okay, we made the mistake, but I'll show you, I'm not going to make that mistake again." I suppose football's changing, it, Terry. Like like you say, nowadays with the academy, they're all a little bit they're, they're pampered, aren't they? I think. Whereas back in your day, you you had to you probably had to grow up as more quicker. Well, well, one, day Alan, yeah. Yeah. one day Alan Hunter said I'd played well in a game. And I played alongside him probably 30, 40 games. And once he turned around and said, well played to me. <laughs> so I knew I must have had a really, really good game that day. You know, and that was, so it was a hard school as far as the coaching staff and the manager was concerned. But your teammates expected a lot out of you as well. And they would be on your back before the coaching staff. Mm. Yeah. They, had, they had these big standards that they, they, that they brought to the, the starting 11. Yeah, very much. Yeah, yeah they, had, they had big standards and you had, to, you had to get up to those standards. They wouldn't come down to you. You had to rise to get up there. Yeah. As you say, Rich, the, the, the kids of today, but it's a different society with the kids now. They're, Definitely. They're it's not just breed. football, is it, Terry? It's not just football, it's life in general. Yeah, life in general. So it's um, societal rather than just uh, football or sport. So you, you've got to be very careful. You've got to be more cute than ever of, of how you phrase things for them to respond to. Some need a you know a bit of a, a beating when it comes. No, not a beating, but a bit you know, with, your, with your tongue. Nothing else. <laughs> I'll away with that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Be careful what I say. But they, you know, some need that verbal sort of incentive. But if you do it to others, then you'll lose them. So you have to you have to find ways of doing it, and that's what you try to do. But it's frustrating because it was just one way uh, in our day. And you look at how many players came through and, and, and wanted to succeed simply because they've been written off so many times. You know, that, that formed character, that formed a spine, and that formed, um, what can you say, a camaraderie and spirit. Because if, if one person was berated in a team, everybody stood up for them and helped them out and helped them get through it and made sure that, that you know, the manager or the coach, whoever it was, Got away from the player because you know he's, he was he was uh, doing well and doing better. Yeah, well, yeah. hard work fair. What, yeah. what formation did you guys? What formation did you guys play? Because we're looking down here, people might not realise Walkie scored almost forty goals in this season in all competitions. 
So what was actually the go-to formation for Ipswich under Bobby Robson in 81? Four, six, right. <laughs> <laughs> me, 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 Terry, and the two full-backs stayed at the back and everybody else went, went off and scored goals. <laughs> Lucky was a holding midfielder, wasn't he, Russell? Get out of it. <laughs> yeah. That that was that was his that was his position on um on the notice board, if you like. Yeah. Just play in front of me and Terry. Except just playing in front of me and Terry allowed him to go all the way up to the opponent's eighteen yard box, which is where he spent most of his time and that's the best place for Walkie to spend his time. But he was yeah. he was never missing. He was never missing on his defensive duties, but what a player. What yeah. a great well, that, that brings us to the first game then of this UEFA Cup run. Aris Salonica from Greece. And Walkie was a 5-1 win at home. Walkie scores a first half hat-trick and scores three penalties in the whole in the game total. So that was a, that was a nice little game to start off the, the run. Yeah, yeah, it was. And um, there wasn't that many at the ground. I mean, I, I've got it down here. So it's 20, just over 20,000, I think it was, yeah. at, the, at the ground. It, was so <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't uh, a case of... Um, full houses all the time but it was it was it, we, all, we all thought that we could you know if we started off well that would give us uh, momentum um and it was a nice sort of change from league football and cup football and it was it was you know playing against players you didn't know playing against strange team and formations and all these kind of things because you remember i was a fan at the club and, and russell obviously was a, you know, a, a younger player at the club uh, ahead of me but you're always looking at teams that come from Europe because Ipswich were always in Europe. So you're looking, you go down on a on a Tuesday night at Portman Road because you, sometimes you had duty, sometimes you had jobs as a as an apprentice or YTS, and you'd see all the foreign players and the, and the, the way that they played, and you you know you have a look at them and it's they're, you know they're they're not aliens, but it was completely different football from what what we were used to. So European nights are special nights, and you know to have to see it and watch it and go there. And then to be a player in that situation was was immense. It was it was wonderful, and uh, we wanted to make the most of it. But you know, the, our machine, which it was at that time, just kept rolling along. And no matter who played us, we just wanted to steamroll them and beat them. So in this game, Walkie Walkie scored three, and I, it, I was um, I've done a bit of research, and it said they were quite ill ill disciplined. Well, I'm thinking if they give three penalties away, they must have been a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I think it kicked off a little bit, but. Um... I think it kicked off more in the second leg uh, when I think they're on a bit of a hide into nothing. Mm. But, yeah, they were 2-0 they were up, weren't they, Russell, in your, in your way leg that we lost uh, 3-1? Yeah, but, yeah. It was going to be a hard game. All, all of these sides um, that came to visit Portman Road uh, were a lot better and a lot stronger playing on their own patch. Um and you look at Ipswich Town's record in Europe over the years, they've never lost a European tie, ever. Mm. Not to Barcelona, not to Cologne, not to anybody. You know, and there's some great teams that have uh, tried to take uh, a win at Portman Road that haven't managed it. Uh, but the game, the game in uh, Salonica, it was just one of those things you just had to get through the 90 minutes, make sure you didn't pick up any silly injuries, didn't get anybody sent off, which meant you'd have Probably missed a, a game later on, um, and it's it's just a case of being a bit more disciplined about things. And again, that got hammered home by Sir Bobby and Bobby Ferguson. You know, they they would insist that you know you kept your cool, and your senior players. Then you know your your captain Mickey Mills, he would be doing likewise on the pitch. He'd just be echoing what what the coaching staff was saying off the pitch. Mm. I remember, I remember the guy. I remember the going there, um, and it was we're five one up, and it was a, it was the the weather was beautiful. It was really hot, and we went on this bus journey and was like sightseeing and all this sort of thing. And you know, your boys had to take some suntan lotion with them and all that sort of thing. And it felt very much like a holiday. And that was the, I mean, that was the biggest fear of of the management team. But I mean, yeah. being when you're two 0 down just after twenty minutes. And the referee has given two goals, which were never goals. I mean, the the um, the touchline and the goal line the, were about a foot. They were like in short. You remember that, Russell, on a hard pitch, and it was like, and the ball bounced in front. You know, like in play, not behind the line, but in front, and it bounced. And Millsy clears it off the line, and he gives a goal. Unbelievable. 
So we're two 0 down, and we're thinking because all the all the the mess is coming out now. Well, my God, what's going to happen now? Yeah. And then we, and then it was like um, what three one three nil down, and it, oh my goodness! But then get luckily Gagey popped up for a for a for a goal, which obviously killed the tie. But you yeah. remember Russ? Remember it was afterwards Russ with with the bus. Yeah, there's um, some of the windows cave in and all got shattered or something. Yeah, it wasn't us. It was the it was their supporters. I might add. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Were you two um, were you two roommates on these away trips? Oh, oh, yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I've always wondered. Because um, presumably Stansted wasn't going then. So where would Ipswich have flown out from? Would you, did you have your own plane? Was a plane chartered? How, how did it work? South End, Norwich. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Or did we go to Heathrow? No, it's a, it was generally South End or Norwich. Was it? We, we, we flew out of Norwich on the, um, at Easter for the for the semi final, but right. it was generally South End. It was always good because we used to get back. And virtually every flight we came back on, we always managed to get a little little um, something for the bus on the way back. And it was normally like miniatures from the stewardesses and stewards they used to give them <laughs> in the bag. So we'd come off the bag and the boys thought, you know, people thought, oh, they've done a bit of shopping, but these are the little little um, miniatures that we had for the bus. Just simply as a nightcap, just because we've, we've, we've done pretty well. We got through, so it was a nightcap. That's what yeah, it was. Yeah. We, uh, so second, second round, second round we had um, Bohemians of Prague. I was looking here, at Terry, at the home game. He only had seventeen thousand for the home leg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so it, yeah, it never started off really full houses, um, and it was it was a. Uh, I can't remember much about the game. It was um, pretty straightforward, goalless first half, and then Walkie scores a couple of goals, and then the eighty-first minute, Kevin Beatty comes on, Beat. and with his and with his very first touch. He smashes the ball into the back of the net to make he it. He took the goalie goals. with him, didn't he? I'll see that goal. Oh, it's you, yeah, isn't it, man? Was, I mean, yeah. How can you do that with your first touch? He just touched to the side and he just smashed it. I think it was. Yeah, it was brilliant. It was great to see as well because you know, the beat's a big hero. So um, to do that and and to, to, two nils a funny lead in football. So to, to go over there three nil was well, that was really good again. So that was yeah. a very important. That was a very important goal because obviously you lost the away leg two 0 You had no Paul Cooper, no Franz Tyson, and no Paul Mariner in the second leg. So obviously the beats goal there was was a massive goal, right. and it helped get us through. And no suntan lotion either. It was freezing cold, wasn't it? <laughs> no, it was bloody snow as well. It was awful. It was really cold. Yeah, so we we hung on. We hung on. Is that, um, that's that's where the beat Sorry, you talk about the crowd being at Portman Road, only only twenty thousand. Listen, when, when you're, you're looking at our Salonica coming to Portman Road or or anywhere, yeah. and then Bohemians of Prague, they're not exactly going to no. pull in a bursting amount of people, are they? No disrespect to them, but there were some good clubs in it, though, wasn't there? It was Dynamo Kiev, Hamburg, yeah. which have fallen off a little bit in present day, Juventus, Man United, Barcelona, Porto, and Alex, the teams that have been a a staple of the Champions League in recent years, were straight into yeah. the UEFA Cup, weren't they? Yeah, and we'd have got a few more for some of the bigger teams, I'm sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the, the, the Bohemians away game is where BE just wore short sleeves, wasn't it, in like sub-zero temperatures? <sighs> yeah, I think, I think it was that was the next round. Like. Was that the next round in, um, the, in Lord, Lord, away? No, Lord, Bohemians. Away, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was the one. That was the cold one. Was yeah, it? The pitch, was the pitch frozen for that second leg? Yeah, it was. Uh, they brushed the snow off the pitch and just made like a snow wall all the way around the outside of the pitch. And then they paint the the lines in red or something, Terry. Yeah, it was like it was like playing ice hockey. It was uh, it was it was slippy. It was it was ice and snow and all this kind of thing. Yeah, they were, I think they were it was chalk or some whatever it was that was around the outside. It was. Yeah. I mean, it would never have been allowed to go ahead now in today's football. Not a chance. But it was um, it was in December, so it was, it was obviously going to be cold in Poland. So it was it was flipping cold. But luckily, we had the five 0 lead. So once yeah. the game had done the business at Portman Road, yeah, and they'd yeah. knocked out Man United and Juventus, hadn't they, in the previous rounds? That's right. That's so right. Yeah. And Boniek, Boniek played in the in the second. And Boniek played in the ah yeah, went to Juventus, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I went down to watch I watched them at Portman Road the night before the game. 
And I thought I'd have a look at Bonnie Egg just to see how he plays. And he spent all night in goal. <laughs> the shooting practice and he was in the goal. I didn't believe in the 82 World Cup, Bonnie Egg. Yeah. Mm. And then when it was really cold out in um, in Prague, we had uh, a nice litre bottle of uh, Bell Scotch whisky uh, on the table. And as we went out for the start of the game, so Bobby said, listen, lads, do yourselves a favour. It's getting even colder out there. Have a quick swig of that as you go out. And, just, you know, it just braces yourself a little bit. You yeah. Know? yeah. Yeah. You imagine that yeah. nowadays. You imagine that nowadays. <laughs> Pep Guardiola yeah. saying to his guys, there you go, just have a little swig of that before you go out. Damn this. <laughs> We're just yeah. fighting yeah. Kevin. <laughs> Can you remember the journey home, Russ? When we, when we went, well, not home. When we got, we, the lodge was about two or three hours away, you think, from Warsaw or wherever we flew into. So we had a, they had the coach journey. It was free, and the ice was inside the, the coach and the windows inside. And so remember, we were singing because it was near Christmas. We were singing Beatles songs because it was you know, the day before or, or something that um, John Lennon was shot. So we were all yeah. singing Beatles songs in memory of him. It was a, it was a great trip back and. Um, yeah, yeah. We, we yeah, it was just amazing, just amazing, just to, just to to be, you know, you, you always remember where you were when these when some major events happen, yeah. and we all, yeah, yeah. all knew where we were. Yeah, yeah, I didn't clock that. Yeah, it was the, it was the tenth of December, the game, and and he was shot on the eighth of December. Yeah, I didn't yeah, clock that. that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you a Beatles fan, Terry? I thought you were heavy, more a heavy metal fan, weren't you? Yeah, but he was an icon, wasn't he? I mean, he's just yeah. he was just amazing, the music yeah, yeah. and everything else like that. Just really talented. So yeah, it was uh, it was a shock. It was just a shock. I think everybody was well, wow, like you know, when Kennedy was killed and all this kind yeah, of. Yeah, I can still remember that that being on the news about John then. Was it, with the beat being such a you know, I know he was a big hero for you, Terry and and Russell. Did it did it feel weird you two keeping him out of the side because he was on the bench, wasn't it? So you've yeah. had these icons in Hunter and BT, and now we've got you guys have come in and. Kevin sitting on the bench. Was that a well, weird sensation for you? He's struggling with injuries, Terry, wasn't he? On and off. So yeah. he wasn't 100% fit for, for much of the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he plays it was, in that it was really weird. It, it was really weird because they're my idols because I've, I've watched them play and all that sort of thing. And they are, you know, when you're at the club with them, they are, they're still your idols. And, you know, it's, but it's your job, you know. You've got to try and get into that first team. You've got to try yeah. and do your job. Um, and if you no do enough, there, you right? start, then well done. But it, yeah, but it was they were great guys. I mean, they they taught us loads of things about how to play and what to do and how to stand up for yourself. And they just, you know, they were just fantastic. And um, as well as you know being you know our idols and you know being the the, the greats of Ipswich, they were really decent men as well. Fantastic yeah. people. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Yeah. In that Bohemians away game, all three of you play. So we've got but number four is BT, five Osman, six Butcher. So was that kind of a three at the back going on back then? Or how, how did that play out? Uh, no. no, it wouldn't have been three at the back. It would have been oh. either Terry or Kevin would have played left back, wouldn't you? Yeah. Uh, did I play left back then? I think I did. I think I might have done, yeah. Laurie, was he the best player you two ever that? played with? Was he, was he yeah. the best player you ever played with, Kevin? Um, um, natural talent, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. just I mean, a the, shame the, to see more of him. The power, the his power, beat his power, and his spring was just phenomenal. It really was. And he was, he, he didn't know his own strength at times, and he would, he would clatter into you, and you, oh, he would leave you with a, with a right bruise, and you know, he could, he could, he could hurt you, but he didn't mean to. He was, he was a gentle giant in many respects, but. Yeah. When he meant to do something on the pitch, he certainly, you know, he did it. He was, he was tough. He was strong and quick. So yeah, it was, uh, it was an honour to be You know the statue, in. Terry. You know the statue that they're going to make. Is that the header when he scored at Everton when he's hung in the air? I think it's from. No, I don't think it is. I just, I, I think that's because he, because Sean looked through a lot of pitches and um, he, he, we all thought that rather than just being a, you know, the natural one with the ball at your feet and all that sort of thing, his power and his, he's best remembered for his power in the air. Um, and to get it and catch it the way it is is, oh, yeah. is is unbelievable. I've seen the maquettes and they're they're remarkable. And it, it's going to be a great unveiling. Unfortunately, with COVID, you know, yeah. we haven't done it yet. We, we would have done, but I think with the hopefully the resurgence of town um, next year, um, you know, we can, we'll be able to do it. And it could be the 
it could go well on the way to helping you know restart the actual club uh, with the new owners and the manager as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember where I read it, Rich, but I seem to recall Bobby Robson writing somewhere in one of the books that when he became England manager, he penciled in BT as maybe a potential for the '82 World Cup. But of course. Injury How many caps did he get, Terry? Did he only play nine times? It was about nine right. times for England he played, didn't he? Yeah. I think Not it's like about that. that. It was yeah. a travesty yeah. that he never got more. Yeah. 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 So good in the air. You know, he, he, he would be head and shoulders above everybody else. And he, where he got that spring from, just natural timing, um, phenomenal. Mm. Good question there from Adam Flat. To both of you, if we could keep, if we'd have kept beating George Burley fit for the whole season, would we have won the treble? Quite possibly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think it would certainly would have helped us do that because, it, like, you know, we lost a lot of games in the the latter part of the season. Um, mm. you know, I think we were, you know, we were, you know, we were tired and there were little niggling injuries and I mean the, the, the they talk about fixture pile-ups now but there's nothing like the fixture fixture list that we had uh, back in the day so um you know we yeah we did lose a lot of games um, later on and, and there was obviously reasons for that but with George being fit Millsy went to right back and Steve McCall came in at, at left back and we call him Grimace because he lost he's lost all his front teeth so, you know, he, <laughs> So Grimace, who, uh, Steve, he, um, he came in and was fantastic. He really was. He played a, he played a few games as, as, as a sub as well. But did you know Kevin Beattie in that European campaign, Beat had, um, he was sub five times, two starts and that goal. So he, he played an important part in the, yeah uh, in that campaign. So you yeah. know, it, was, it was really good to have him. Big Al, Big Al didn't. I don't think, think Big Al actually played. That was back in the day, Terry, when you only had one sub as well, wasn't it? One sub and the pitches as well that you played on. Yeah, yeah. I think but I've, I've gone through the record and I think we had two subs. Two subs for Europe, I think he was, Rich. But what, certainly one sub in the league. Certainly one sub in the league. Yeah, yeah. one sub in the league. Yeah, two for Europe. But we had Kevin Steggles also played Terry, didn't he? Yeah, yeah that's right. Kevin Steggles, yeah. yeah, I remember him. He uh, was like, kind yeah. of like a backup to you guys, was he? Yeah, well, two starts. He right played back. at the end and Cologne, yeah. But for somebody to come in like that, um, and it's not like today where the subs come on and they play 20 minutes on a regular basis and they've got a choice of five subs. So if you're on the bench, you're, you're, you're probably expecting to go on, if not this week, next week, whatever. Kevin Steggles probably wasn't even on the bench for the majority of the season. Suddenly he's on the bench for the European Games or he's in the starting lineup for European Games. And having to play 90 minutes football in the toughest game that he's ever faced or the biggest game he's ever faced. Yeah. And he was fantastic. He did yeah. the job. Yeah, he did a great job. Good yeah. lad, eight, yeah. Eight, he played eight times that season, six in the league and two in Europe. Yeah. 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 Well, we've reached, we've reached the quarterfinal stage, so it's only right we should bring in someone who was in the crowd that night. So, Graham, get yourself in now. Here he, he is. is. Good morning. And guess what I've got on? How are you doing? There it is, Lenny. Graham, memories of St Etienne. Obviously, the UEFA Cup final was memorable for actually get, getting some silverware, you know, because after the FA Cup semi-final defeat in extra time and missing out on the league, the UEFA Cup final was the icing on the cake. But the reason I've got this scarf is... I don't know if Terry and Russell would agree, but the away leg down in the south of France was the best performance I've seen in sort of 15, 1600 matches I've watched Ipswich. That was number um, one. That's the top match by yeah. a long way. Yeah. Well, so Bobby said, Graham, uh, we have demolished a good side with one of the best victories anyone has achieved in Europe in the last 10 years. Well, when, when we went down, we, we did it the real sad cheapo way of doing it getting the uh, train down to london and then the boat train down to dover over to dunkirk about three four o'clock in the morning on the morning of the match then out out to paris and then we jumped on a train down to st etienne which was about five six hours away got on the train and it was just full of st etienne fans you know if you can imagine like most of the man united fans that watch it from london and occasionally travel up to old trafford there was all these st etienne fans doing 
the same thing and they gave us so much stick. They said, you're wasting your time. We've never lost at home in Europe. We, we aren't going to lose. And we were like, oh, but you haven't seen our team yet. And then sort of went, went down fantastic. I think, if I recall, didn't we go 1-0 down after about nine or ten minutes? Johnny Rep. Johnny Rep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and they had it was awful. Platini played as well, didn't he? I yeah. think Johnny Met Johnny Met Odd played. Yeah, Ed, Eddie Trace, all the goalkeeper as well. So, yeah. So so basically we we were because we'd travelled independently, we were tucked away up one far end away from the bulk of the Ipswich supporters. And we, before the game started, we were Ipswich Union Jack, the one that's behind me here, singing God Save the Queen, and so a whole load of bottles started getting thrown in our direction. So we thought we'd better keep quiet. And then final whistle, we met up with an English school teacher that was based in Lyon, and they said, oh, we'll get you safely back to the station. So there was me and two other mates, and one of my mates is rather a large guy, and we got back to their car, and there was three of us in the back of one of the old-fashioned little minis, and I thought, my God, my mate, I think he could have worn it as, as much as get into it. And they got us back to the station, and we got onto the platform, and then there was like a scream from the other end of the platform, English boys. And we're thinking, oh, my God, they're going to kill us. And that, they all came up with a crate of Heineken, shaking hands, saying we've never seen a better team if, if we're going to lose to the, the Ipswich. And then we travelled all the way back up, sort of got back about three, four o'clock in the morning, back to Paris, got to a cafe within the view of the Eiffel Tower, drink, drinking champagne and croissants about half past seven in the morning. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, my God, by the time we got back to get the hovercraft back across the channel, we were feeling a little bit rough for wear. We, we lost a camera. We lost some money. A lot. I mean, I've kept this one, but we lost a lot of souvenirs. But who cared? We'd just seen the best ever Ipswich performance. Yeah. That's what, was the, what was the mood in the dressing room after that game, uh, Russell and Terry? What was, what was Bobby Robson like after that game? Like, Graham says it's the best performance he's ever seen of Ipswich. What was, what was Robson's take on it when he got back into the dressing room? I can't really remember, Terry. What was he? What was he saying? Uh, he's, uh, he's probably giving me a rollicking again. I don't know. I can't remember. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the usual. <laughs> but when we when we got back in, the, I, I didn't want the game to stop. I was enjoying it that much. We were we were romping. We were just we, we were we had them on the run, didn't we? We really did. It was just yeah. a wonderful game. We I didn't want it to end. I didn't want the final whistle to go because I felt we could score more goals. It was just one of those sort of you know, purple patch. Yeah. You know, I suppose you know, great, great, greatest games that you'll you'll ever have, probably. Yeah. Do you remember tactically? They sort of tried to play Platini in sort of a just off Johnny Rep and in a similar sort of role that Eric Gates played for us. And I think we had a discussion amongst the coaching staff and ourselves about who was going to be responsible for Platini if he if he got on the ball because you wanted to make sure he didn't give him too much time and, and just make sure that he wasn't allowed to create anything. And I think it fell to me and Johnny Walk just to make sure whoever was closest sort of dealt with him and dealt with him the, the quickest. Yeah. Even though that was the, the general in, instruction, that message was passed over across the back four. And in, in those days, we had such a good understanding of each other's game. I would know if Tay was in a better position than I was to go and close Platini down. So Tay would do that and Walkie would compensate for him and I would fill across for where Walkie would come from or, or vice versa. Um, so we were very in tune with, with each other and each other's responsibilities. You know, so that was one of the main concerns that we had to deal with on the night. And as it worked out, he hardly got a kick. Mm. Was it yeah. was it difficult? Because obviously Platini came with a reputation, but of course we didn't have the beauty of the internet, YouTube, video and all that kind of thing. Did you? You, you probably only ever saw him play irregularly, I suppose. It was just a name that you knew of and knew he was a big talent, I guess. Oh, yeah. You see him on the TV. You, you, you understand what he could do. Um they, had, they were a star-studded team, as Graham said. Yeah. They were they were a lot of really good players in that team. The pitch was awful, so it was a bit of a leveller in many respects. But you know, we I think we grew into the game after being a goal down. We just said, "After oh, hell with it, you know, let's step up a gear." Um, and we'd, we'd been goals down before in in um, in the league, and we just 
you know, sometimes it was going out there a bit complacent and then bang, you know, we decided to to really put our foot on the gas. So um, it was just one of those. And, and I think when that, I think it was Arnold scored a goal. It was a rocket, wasn't it? A left foot rocket. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. None of it went off the post or anything else. It was an unbelievable goal. And I think that just completely uh, gutted them. That just, you know, they just knocked them for six. And we just, we just ran, ran right after that. Mm. So We'd had a good trip, Terry, hadn't we, going out to uh, St. Etienne. You know, we <laughs> we were allowed a bit of free time to chill out, a little bit like Graham. We had to do the hard work of getting there. Um, <laughs> but you can't afford to get bored. So, you know, you've got to keep yourselves active and um, together really with your team. Sorry? Rehydrated, I think. Rehydrated, I think, after the flight, I think it was. That's the word I was looking for, rehydrated. Yeah. Very we, important. We found a way of doing it, didn't we, for an hour or so, <laughs> to test the French hospitality. And it was very good. But then I, I remember coming back on the plane. Remember, we, uh, I, we, we, went, we went shopping. On the day of the game, we went shopping for some red wine and cigars, um, as you do. So... Um, We've got the red watch. So after the game, we're on the plane coming back. And yeah, and we've got bottles of Brulee and Chateau Neuf de Pape in our pockets of our jackets. We've got cigars in our top pocket. And I remember going to the, to the, to the cockpit and knocking on the door. And it's opened by the cap, one of the cap, one of the pilots, one of the captain. That's the light. And then I said, Do you fancy a drink? And I got the bottles of red wine out. And they said, no. I said, well, look, we'll celebrate a great win. And they said, no, with all due respect. And I said, well, do you want a cigar as well? And they said, no. So, and then I thought, oh, well, I'll just go back. As that's more for us. So it was just one of those things. You, yeah. If you did that now, you'd be arrested or you'd, you'd probably handcuffed and put thrown in jail. It was, it's remarkable how time changed. Yeah. Well, Graham, what was the mood of, so you, you, if you can remember it, are all the fans now thinking, we've now beaten St. Etienne 4 1? We're not that too far from the final. We could go on and win this thing. As you once said in the film, Russell, we can go on and win this. We can win this. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to go. To, to be honest, I mean, in 80 81, there were 66 matches. I think you played in all of them, didn't you, Russell? I played in all the games there, yeah. Yeah. Six, so there were 66 matches. And I, as a 16 year old, I hate to admit my age, but as a 16 year old, uh, in my first job, earning 25 quid a week, so there's lots of scrimping and borrowing and whatever, I actually managed to do 60 of the 66 matches, which I was well proud of. Yeah. And to, to be honest, wherever you went, home or abroad, you just didn't ever believe it such we're going to lose. Even if they went behind, I think, as Terry said earlier on, you, you could always be confident that they would come back and get at least one goal more than the other team. And... I, 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 the second leg against St Etienne, I, I found it almost felt a bit like an anti-climax. It was almost disappointing because there was no way that they were going to turn it round. So it was almost, I don't know what it felt like playing to you two guys. but Terry it felt scored. Like Terry scored that night, didn't you, Terry? Yeah, I somehow fluked one in, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Again. Yeah, no, the, the second leg it just felt like a... Almost like job done in the first yeah. leg, you know, and confident for going through to to the semi finals, and then obviously on to Germany and beyond. See, this is interesting. So for the for the for the home leg, we had thirty thousand, and yet for the semi finals, guys, we had twenty four, nearly twenty five thousand. So you you would have thought for the semi, you would have the same mm. sort of crowd, wouldn't you, Matt? That seems a mm. bit strange. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There'd be you couldn't get a ticket now, could you? It'd be, it'd be absolute gold dust. Oh. Yeah. We played a lot of games that season, remember, and it wasn't cheap yeah. to come and watch, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. top entertainment. Well, we best, we, before we get to semi finals, I think we better bring in the goats, A eh, eh, Crunch. Do you want to give yeah, him in? Get the goat in. Get him in. Come on. Where is he? Come on, Colin. Here he is. Like. Oh, look at that shirt. Good evening, Colin. Love the shirt. Good evening, everybody. How, how is everybody? Hi, Colin. Uh, are, you, are you okay? Are you Very enjoying good. the chat, Colin? Are you enjoying it? Oh, I chatted, to, I chatted to Colin earlier, Matt, and he said he was quite nervous about tonight. Really? I can't believe yeah. it. No, I, yeah, a little bit of tad, you know. <laughs> um, it's lovely, lovely to see Terry and uh, Russell. Um, I spoke to Russell, I think, about a couple of years ago outside the Blue Gates, 
And um, I always call him Peter Pan. He didn't never see his rage that lad. Um, <laughs> but uh, but it's, it's lovely to see you both. And, and I'd just like to go on from uh, what Graham was saying about the Sonetti Endgame. So I went to the Sonetti Endgame. I went a different route. Um, wasn't the best, to be honest. Um, I took the ferry across and I took a 13-hour, believe it or not, Bus, bus journey. I think we stopped about four or five service stations, 13 hours on the coach down from uh, Belgium to the south of France. And um, when we got down there, it was absolutely, Graham will probably remember this. It was just, we got down there uh, about about the 10 or 11 in the morning or something, overnight, you know, bus journey. And I was speaking to a few French lads and they were saying about wait till later, you know, wait till later. And I'm thinking, what are they going on about? And I, Terry and Russell will probably remember this and Graham. About four o'clock in the afternoon, about three, four hours before the game started, all these cars with green and white scarves out of the windows, beep, 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 beep hooters and uh, these trumpets and everything. I, you couldn't hear yourself think, you know. And um, go, go, going on from what Graham said about the actual game, went in and we stood. I, I was with a lad who I used to work with at Royal Mail. And we were standing like, you know, like as if he was in the front of the kind of North Stand kind of thing. That was quite, Terry, I remember the ground. And it was the end that Johnny Rep scored the first goal. And yeah. it, big, big stand. And we was like right down the front, and like Graham quite rightly said, and these little, little, these like little kind of whiskey bottles and that started coming down, you know. And uh, yeah, it was a bit, a bit on the old um, frightening side for a little while. But uh, I've got to agree with Graham. I've got to say this to you, Terry and Russell. I saw no end of games, that literally thousands of games, and I, I've got to say that that night in San Etienne, was, in my opinion, having watched it since 1964, the greatest 90 minutes I've ever seen you play. That was fantastic. My father, God rest his soul, has gone now. My dad loved and adored you two, adored it since like I do. And I asked my dad once, right, because obviously he could remember the championship went inside in 1962. And I said to Dad, let's go along in the car once. And I said to Dad, Dad, I said, this is, you know, like after we'd won the UEFA Cup. I said, you've seen us win the championship. In other words, you, you know, he'd seen us win the lot. He'd, I've seen, you've seen us win the FA Cup. You've seen us win the UEFA Cup. What was the best side? And he thought, he was driving. We was going to a game, you know. And he said, thought just for a second, he said, 81 side. I said, what, better than the the title winning side? He said, yeah, hands down. He, he, he said, and, I, and I'll always respect that, uh, Russell and Terry, he said that your side was the greatest Ipsy side that's ever been. And I and I must admit, I like I say, I, I, I go from the Frank Brogue and John O'Rourke days, you know, and I was so, so, so sad to hear Frank die during the week. Um, God rest his soul. So I've gone like from the Columville John Ken Hancock days right up to you know, right up to the present day. And I must admit, in the glory years, from nineteen sixty-four to say like, you know, to eighty two, eighty three, eighty four kind of season, your your side was the best. And and um, and also I'd just like to say a word about the beat, you know, God rest his soul. In my opinion, if that man was playing today, you know, they talk about people like in the last few years, people like Rio Ferdinand, God knows who. Um, I honestly think that he'd go for over 100 million today. And I, I'm not exaggerating. I, and I think Terry and Russell would agree with that. Would you, Terry? Would you, Russell? Uh, 100%. For me, yeah, 100%. Definitely, awesome player. I just, awesome. I just, I just thought he was unbelievable. He was unbelievable, and and 
his his injuries were only because he was so brave. He he was so fair as well. Terry and Russell know this. They were in training with him every day. He was hard, yes. Was yeah. he the best hatter I've ever seen? Probably. And that but 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 the thing is with a beat, he didn't know when not to make a tackle. He he had to make the tackle, didn't he, Russ? He yeah. did, Terry. But Colin, you know, I'll, I'll, tell you, you know, that, Colin, I'll tell you a story about Kevin. We we put him forward to go into the uh, <laughs> uh, the sprint challenge to find the fastest footballer over 100 yards that there was in the UK. So I think it's Malcolm McDonald, Steve Kinden, Kevin Beatty, Alan Kennedy, a couple of other players. So well, we're all thinking there's only ever going to be one winner there. Because I've heard Kevin, this story. This is a classic Russell, this story. Kevin would, <laughs> Kevin would probably win that race by five yards any day of the week. So we're all <laughs> waiting to hear from the result because he wasn't on social media or anything. And apparently he came second. And we couldn't believe it. So we said to him, Kevin, what... What happened? Something must have happened for you to come second because none of those lads can beat you. And he said, well, when I got up there, I realised I forgot to take a jock strap. <laughs> he says, and after about 20 or 30 yards, my old, my old Bill dropped out the side of me shorts and I run along and took it back in a bit and it cost me a few yards. <laughs> <laughs> that's why he ended up coming second. <laughs> I, 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 I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, Russell. He 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 was he was so quick, wasn't he, Russ? Oh, quick, powerful. So he was as quick as he had to be, and jumped as high as he had to jump. Russell, can I can I just tell you a little story? I remember we went up to the first division, uh, up to um, up to Highbury. We was playing to Arsenal at Highbury, and. And I remember this game because I like Rich and uh, Martin. Everybody knows I like Graham. I went, God, you know, so many grounds you wouldn't believe. Anyway, we were at Highbury this for a first vision fixture, and I remember this incident. And I read it in David O'Leary's book. Years later, David O'Leary wrote a book, and Ipswich, we we had we we got a corner up the North Bank at Highbury. And Woodsy was taking the corner. And O'Leary said, he said, I, 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 I don't lie to you. He said, we saw the beat coming up for the corner. He said, well, somebody better mark him, you know, kind of thing, you know. And he said, I'm not lying. He said, he was up the North Bank end. He said, would you put the corner over? He said, and I swear to God, his head was 18 inches above the crossbar. No, he easy. said it was probably, arguably, O'Leary was said this, the the best or the greatest leap for a corner that he'd ever seen. And this was David O'Leary, arguably, arguably, one of the, you know, one, one of the six, maybe five or six best central defenders at, at that period, or seven yeah. or eight. Do you remember you know. Cristiano Ronaldo, the outstanding header he had? Was it last season yep. on the far post? Yeah. yeah. Kevin was like that all the time. Mm. All I can time. remember, because I used to always stand up the North Stand, you know, when I was a lad. I mean, what I was talking about, you know, I was 24 when we won the UEFA Cup, 21 when we won the FA Cup. And yeah, you know, like was a lad, you know, with me, me, me mates, my brother and that, we used to stand, stand up the North Stand. Obviously, yeah, that's where you went. And the amount of times, Terry and Russell, I've actually, and then Graham, I've actually seen, you know, standing halfway up the North Stand, the beat. I, I can see it now. And so can you two. I can see him now. I'll tell you, he was so, so, I'm not saying this because you said it, Russ, because you saw him in train every day. He was so good in the air. He was absolutely unbelievable and I, and I and I'd like to say to all the young fans the ones who never ever saw him play or young people who never actually ever saw him play and 
probably think how asked themselves how good he actually was. I'd arguably say, and not because it was in the chat earlier, I've said this loads of times over the last 30 or 40 years. I think probably he was as good a left half as this country has ever seen apart from Bobby Moore. Would you agree, Terry? Yeah, I mean, what a partnership that would have been, Bobby Moore and the beat. that would Because a left footer well, and a right footer it would be just unbelievable. I mean, that would be worth a lot of money. But we had a competition every, not every week, every sort of month or whatever it was at the ground. We, we had a, you went into the gym uh, and they had a mark against the wall. So you had to, you, you had to stand uh, sideways onto the wall and you had to, in bare feet or whatever it was, and you had to jump with two feet and you had to jump. And then what you did before you jumped, you put your arm up as high as you could and then mark, they marked it out. And then you jumped whenever you're ready, you jump with two feet and you, you, you then touch the wall, the highest point that you could with your hand. And the differential then, they, they would gauge that for whatever reason. But the beat was like miles ahead of everybody else. It was, it was just phenomenal. And I also, well, he was so strong. We used to go sometimes when we were away to pubs and everything else like that. Just, just purely, purely for rehydration, of course, just to make sure we topped it up. And then he'd go in there and <laughs> Pete would have, he'd get his right arm and he'd say, right, who wants to arm wrestle me? So he'd hit his right arm to, and, he, and he'd win. He'd win and win and win. And then he'd say, right, now I'm going to try you with my strong arm. Because he was left-handed, you see. Because <laughs> with the right hand was the strong, yeah. not stronger than his left. But it was amazing. It was about, he would do it for a laugh, and he would. Just, he, he loved the laugh. He loved the cigarette. He loved the beer. He loved the laugh. But he loved life. Simple as that. But, t Terry, oh, oh, going, going back, going back a few years before the UEFA Cup that we're obviously talking about. Do you remember that uh, Paul Mariner debut against West Brom, the seven-nil oh, win when, when Mariner got the beauty, Weimar got four. But then Beatty hit that shot that John Osborne, the West Brom keeper afterwards, said he's glad he got his wrist out of the way because it would have probably ended up in the back of the net with the ball. It was so such a hard shot, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Bohemians as well. He did it against Bohemians as well in the UEFA Cup. So, yeah, when he was on a free kick, it was, it was wow. He wouldn't want to be in the wall, that's for sure. Definitely not in goal. But he was, his power is just, was just immense. He really was. Well, we've, he's we've, got, we've Terry, he's... He scored from a he scored from a halfway line against Leeds, didn't he, Terry? Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, he did. Yeah, that was a shot as well. Yeah. Yeah. David Harvey. <laughs> Do I run? Sorry. David Harvey was in goal for Leeds, wasn't he? And just watched it sail straight over his head. And that and, and that was and Russell. That was a Leeds side as well. <laughs> yeah, it was a yeah. very very good Leeds just, side. No question. Here, here from Jack Messenger for <laughs> yeah. Terry. Yeah. What's the story about beat, beating Sylvester Stallone in an arm wrestle true? Uh, not with me. I, I never wrestled him, but Russell would know this because he was there. Yeah, he, he took on uh, Sly Stallone. Uh, and again, he did it the way Terry said. He went right-handed first. Uh, <laughs> he's like right-handed and then walked his backside left-handed. And uh, <laughs> Sly didn't take too kindly to it. So I bet he didn't. Didn't see it. <laughs> <Two weeks. laughs> Well, we've, we've, uh, we've reached the semi-final stage and the beat's back on the bench and the goals have dried up, Terry, because we've only, we've only beaten Cologne 1-0 in the first leg. A tighter affair than all these other games we had at home. Yeah, but you remember getting to the semi-finals of, of European competitions, you're going, to be, you're going to be pretty good. So, yeah, these, these guys, I think, they, I think they, did they win the title that year in Germany? I'm not too sure, but yeah, they're, 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 they're a good side. Tony Woodcock was, was there. Tony Woodcock, yeah. Yeah. Um, Pierre Litbarski, of course, we yeah. all know about him, World Cup winner, well, Tony yeah. Schumacher in goal, World Cup winner. So, you know, we're meeting teams um, that, are, that are good, you know, good teams, but also fantastic individual players as well. So, yeah, we're at home again. And, you know, once again, we wanted to get a good lead. Once again, we, we felt that we could do that. But, you know, it was, uh, it was, it was a very tough night. Um, we scored early. Well, we scored after about 35 minutes and walking. Yeah. But it was difficult to get a second goal. But the most important thing was we didn't concede. Simple as that. Yeah. And playing these home legs, Terry, first was always the, the harder way around. It was only the Sintetian, um tie where we played the away leg first, which yeah. would have yeah. to do anyway. I, 
that's more difficult, isn't it? Because you, you go away first, and if you get if you can grab a goal away from home or two goals away from home, then it's great to take back. But you don't want to concede, but at the same time, you want to get get forward and score. And I think having not, you know, and I remember after the game, people thinking, "Oh my God, it's only one nil now. We've got to, you know, I've got our work cut out, and you know, could this be the end of it, and all that sort of thing." But we were playing a lot of games at that stage, real a lot of games back to back, and it was. We were we were in a, in in momentum really we were we we weren't doing too bad. But Terry, do you, do you remember that that second leg? It's not like the European games now where they move like all the league fixtures afterwards and before to accommodate you. You'd got the Easter weekend, so you, I think I can't remember if you played Good Friday. You definitely played Saturday. You'd then got the local derby up at Carra Road Easter yeah. Monday, which then yeah. I think you flew straight out from Norwich Airport, and then you were playing Wednesday the second leg in Cologne. You were back, and then you got a league game on the Saturday. I mean, lost two league games before both of those times. Yeah, well, yeah. In, in in fifteen days around that time, um, we played a UEFA Cup semi final first leg. We played uh, an FA Cup semi final. We played against Villa away. Remember going back to Villa Park after we'd lost the semi final away. We, we after, beat them after, away. Sorry, we two nil. We beat them away. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Arsenal, Arsenal at home, Norwich away. And then the UEFA Cup semi-final second leg, all within 15 days. Six games within 15 days, yeah. And with an amazingly small squad as well. There was, did you have about 16 played all season pretty much, wasn't it? Uh, 18. 18, so. 18 yeah. played. But we're, we're, Terry, we, we, Terry, we, 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 we flew out, sorry, sorry, Colin, we flew out from Norwich and we oh. took Sir Arthur South, who was the Norwich City chairman with us, because I think he was big pals with, Mr. Pat and Mr. John. So they, they had a great time. And actually, we had a great time as well, didn't we, Russ? Going out there and getting out there early and going on the fun fair and doing all this kind of things. It was it was just the right tonic at the right time. I remember when we got back, because we flew straight back after the game, we were celebrating more or less all the way home. And my father was staying with me uh, and Terry and I didn't live too far from each other in those days. And... We were greeted with a, a crate of lager on the front garden when we arrived at <laughs> it was one o'clock in the morning or whatever. <laughs> I had to be on the train with Sir Bobby to attend a disciplinary hearing at Lancaster Gate the following morning. At about, I think I was on the coach on the train at 10 o'clock in the morning with Sir Bobby. So we'd just come back from Cologne, had a late night on the train up to London. So Bobby worked his magic and got me off any band I might have been given because I had five bookings and I think they let me off because Sir Bobby's association with the FA more than anything. And uh, I then had to get back to, to Ipswich. Um, that got delayed a little bit for one reason and another, not on the way back. And then we played Manchester City that weekend. So it was like... Ugh. What a week. Yeah. yeah. What a week. Graeme, you, you, you went out to Cologne for the for the away leg, where Terry yeah. scored to send us to the final? Yeah, it was absolutely amazing. I don't know if Terry and Russell remember, but there was a, a lot more support for Ipswich than the Ipswich supporters that went out there. There was hundreds, if not thousands, of squaddies yeah. on their troop buses all yeah. turned up, and they were really giving it during the game and everything. And then, you know, within about five minutes of the final whistle, they'd all disappeared and it left us to travel back into the centre of Cologne where, where we'd got a hotel. And we were, at first we were going to get on the trams, but then there was like a bit of trouble afterwards on that. So we were sort of walking back down the main drag into Cologne and there was like a few little ambushes and things. And I'd got a Cologne scarf that I'd swapped before the game. So I'd sort of got that on and we got so far and then there's a whole load of it just jumped out and we were just about to get... Pump bus and Ipswich fans. No, no, we're Ipswich fans, you know. And um, we, we got back safely. We And we, we just had a very quiet drink in the hotel that night. And then the ne next day we got the train back. And I don't know if you remember, but it was uh, the same period when Liverpool played down in Bayern Munich. And I think it was in the European Cup match as well. So we got on the boat train to go back to the Hook of Holland. And there was a whole load of Liverpool fans on there as well. There was one Liverpool fan that had lost all his clothes the previous night in Munich he'd slept on a bench and someone had nicked them all and he was in this absolute disarray of all like different shoes and clothes and everything that they'd collected together for him and 
we had a great party all the way back to the Hook of Holland. It was brilliant. <laughs> so we've got so we've got to the final. So 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 Colin and Graham, did you did you buy your tickets for the second leg before the first leg? How did it work? I, I, I can't remember. I mean, I, I'd have had the tickets irrespective of first leg result or whatever. You know, basically, as, I mean, I, by then I was a season ticket holder. I'd just got the best tickets I could, you know, as soon as they were on sale, you know. So, um, you know, plan, planned all the travel out there because I think there was specially chartered ferries going out from the Hook of Holland to, uh, from Harwich to the Hook of Holland. And I remember, do you remember Noddy, Brian, Brian Talbot, uh, guys? He, he, he was on there. I think it was with his brother or his brother-in-law. And by the time they got off at the other side, they'd had too much to drink. So their car got left on the edge of the dock somewhere and they came up on the train with us as well, you know. So it was lovely, like ex Ipswich players sort of along to support the team as well. And it was just like absolute, but, you know, I mean, again, 3 nil up from the first leg. We were very confident what was going to happen. But uh, there was always that little bit of ten to hooks, wasn't there, when they outmar played very well second leg. But as long as we got that goal, you know, you didn't think they were ever going to sort of score five to beat us, you know. So it was uh, magical. It was it was dream stuff, wasn't it, to win, Terry to win three 0 in the first leg? And, and Bobby Robson said, "This is the best Holland have got to offer them, and we've blitzed them." Yeah, I, I think that that game came after the um, Middlesbrough game, the uh, midweek of the Middlesbrough. We 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 lost the league at Middlesbrough, so. Yeah. When you lose two, when you lose two out of three, you, you know you don't want to lose the third one. And I think we had to we had to reset, like we said before. And 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 I think that the it was just a case of really digging in and getting on with it. And I think if you look, at, I know we played some great games and won beat Lods and we beat San Etienne, but the final game, that that first leg was a pretty good game as well. And we we were pretty ruthless in that game. And uh, and three nil is you know you think that's fantastic. We did that against Bohemians. But we knew that AZ were a different kettle of fish. They didn't really sort of turn up for the final, but um, you know they certainly turned up for the for the second leg. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Colin, what's your what's your memories of the final? Did you go to both legs? Yes, I certainly did. Um, I, I I actually sent um, Rich and Martin uh, a photograph today of the of, of, of the program. You know that I got. It's like a pinky kind of program we got uh, from the final. Um, but no, like Graham, I, I went over on the ferry with a good friend of mine, John Steed, who I, I've been friends with all my life, really. And we went over there. He's, he's another big town fan. We went over there and with, with um, like I say, on the, on the ferry. And we got over to Holland and, um, and we met... A load of um, squaddies that were based in Germany. They were, they were Leeds fans, actually. And I said to these boys, I said, uh, where are you from, man? They said, oh, we're from Leeds, but we, we've come up to support you lot, you know, because we're Brit all British, or you know. And uh, I said, well, where you got tickets then? Oh, we've got tickets in, in their lot, you know, behind the other goal, you know, because we was up one end and they were, they were up this other end. And um, they got this massive, great Leeds United Union Jack flag. And that was funny because, like, like Russell and uh, Terry will know, there was thousands of us up the other end. And these, and these boys said, you watch, you know, we'll be in amongst the Dutch, you know. Because you know what the Leeds fans are like. And all of a sudden, like, this Union Jack starts like, uh, like somebody got litter kind of thing. And I said to John, my mate, I said, you don't, you don't like a Leeds black. <laughs> and all of a sudden, it all kicked off up the other end. But now going back to the day, Russell and Terry will remember this. That was really hot that day on the second leg <laughs> over there. And we was yeah. all right because we were having a few beers and all that like you do. You know, you're 24 years old. And, um, and, and I can remember going into the, into the ground, this Graham wheel, and that was an open air end. And it was really, like I said, it was really hot. It was even still quite hot at the kickoff. And um, and I remember we scored really, uh, we scored really early. I think we scored out about four or five minutes. Four minutes, Tyson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I just said to me, mate, I said, God, job done. You know, four nil. You know, they've got got five at least. You know, kind of thing. And um, and then you know, like Russell and Terry 
No, 100%. It, it's like as if like the lead was let off the dog, you know. It, it, they just come at us like a blooming, <laughs> like a trying, you know. And and it and 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 bless him, it was a godsend that Walkie got that second goal before half time. We mm. went in three two down, so in other words, we were still uh, five three up at half time yeah. on on aggregate. But as Russ and Terry all know, I mean even the second half. I mean, they scored after about seventy odd minutes, something like that, in the second half. Yeah, and yeah. that was that was re- that was a really, really hard last twenty minutes, wasn't it, Terry Russ? No, it certainly it was. was. Certainly was. Sorry. Yeah, it was a hard ninety minutes. I think the the, the biggest problem was that France scored uh, early on in the game, and that yeah. more yeah. or less, as you say, took the leash off the dog, and. Uh, their only way back into the game was basically to throw the kitchen sink at us from that moment onwards, which they did. And they had some very, very good players there. Johnny McGod and Spellboss, yeah. and they pumped crosses in there and won free kicks. And, and it was a tough old game, you know. But if it had just stayed at 3-0 till about half time then I think that the second half would have been a whole different story. Yeah. They might have been a little bit more cagey, knowing that, yeah, they needed they needed a goal, but they knew we we were always going to score a goal anyway. Um, but just the fact that we scored so early on, it really did mean that they had no other choice but to just go gung ho, full out attack, and do whatever they had to do to get back yeah. in the game. You know, yeah, so they went sorry there, but they went two four four. They would spell boss and met God at the back and then four midfield and four up front. And we'd <laughs> we'd we'd seen that with Graham Taylor's team at Watford, that they did that. And they were always massively yeah. hard games against Watford. But Watford just played sort of route one football many, many times. But uh, but AZ didn't play route one football. They passed it and they were good. And they had no they had no Worries then, no fear then, because they were they were down out of the game, really out of the tie. So they just went for it, and it was I couldn't believe it when you know when they even towards the final whistle they were still going. It was it were, they were like machines, and when we got the final whistle, it was elation. And then I think everybody, Colin will know and Graham will know that everybody seemed to come on the pitch, and we had to get off yeah. and, and then receive the trophy. And Millsy goes up for the trophy. We're in the dressing room, and Alan Brazil goes up in his bathrobe and gets it. I've so, got a question. I wonder where his kit had gone. <laughs> I don't know if he had anything on underneath it, but um, it was uh, it was bizarre because we couldn't then do our celebration and go round. You see, you see so many teams win trophies, win titles, and they go round and parade the cup to their fans and all this. We saw it in '78 at Wembley with with the boys, but mm. we didn't have a chance to do that. And I think that was the most disappointing thing of the actual yeah. cup campaign. Yeah, I'd agree. I'd agree with that. Um, you know. That, that's one of my memories of that night, you know, seeing that white uh, yeah. dressing gown. <laughs> I think everybody everybody says that about, about that final, Russ and Terry. He lives out know, the hotel, but, isn't he? I reckon, I yeah. <laughs> if I know Pala, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I don't think that Alan Brazil could get that bathrobe round himself now, but that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> You're right there, Terry. Did you... Um... <laughs> Did you did you fly back with the trophy or did you, did you wait for keep it and then give it to you for the when you got back to Ipswich or did you actually have it on the plane home? Good question. Oh, a good question. I can't remember much about the flight home to be honest for some reason. <laughs> yeah, really the red wine and cigars out again, Terry. <laughs> mm. Well, probably yeah, probably. Why not? <laughs> it just seemed to appear again in uh, the corn exchange, didn't it? The you wait for Must yeah. have got this somewhere so. What's yeah. your memories of that, the corn exchange, when you've, your guys are all on the balcony with the trophy? Scary. Scary that that amount of people yeah. squeeze into that small space, but they yeah. were 200 foot in the air and on the top of the lampposts. And top of the cabin was Russell. Oh. Yeah. That, I that think was... that's where I, where I got my fear of heights from after that, I think. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Looks like you got over it now, Graham. It's okay. <laughs> but that, well, you, look, you look at the cup. The cup itself was a massive cup. It was so heavy. You yeah. couldn't 
actually hold it for long, like the FA Cup or or the Championship or wherever it was. But the, the actual cup itself was massive. So you had to like you held it up, but there's no handles, and then you passed it on quickly to somebody else. That was that was a thing. Yeah, you couldn't fill <laughs> it with <laughs> bottles of pepper. You'd have to have light ale in it. <laughs> no, I think I think Millsy could have had a bath in it, couldn't he? Is that small, Millsy? <laughs> Terry, can I can I tell you a quick quick little story? Um, obviously, my father was alive then. After you won the UEFA Cup, not long after that, um, they opened a little garage. I can't remember what it was called. There, it was a little garage opened in uh, in Bury St. Em- Saxon Motors, I think it was called. A little garage opened in Bury St. Em- it's only a tiny little place. Anyway, you just won the UEFA Cup. And they and Fran, you probably might even remember coming down with it. France and Arnold came down to open this um, car place in Berry, and they brought the UA for Cup. So obviously, you know, people could have their photographs took with on that. And I actually, or everybody was allowed to. I, I actually, um, you know, like you said, Terry, I actually lifted it up, or so did my dad. And, and I honestly, I knew. It, Everybody always said about how heavy it was. But honestly, I, I couldn't believe, Terry and Russell, how actual, yeah. actually how heavy it was. Yeah, it was it unbelievable. Well, I'll tell you what I loved about that. When you saw it really close, and you'll obviously remember because you've seen it, I loved how it was around the bottom. It had all the little national badges yeah. around the bottom of it. I, I just think that's so unique. I think that's... Fantastic, absolutely fantastic. How, how they do that, you know, put the club's name and then, then a little Union Jack beside it, which I, I, I think is, you know, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I don't, think, I, don't think, I, don't, I don't think Norwich will ever be on it anyway. <laughs> Ter- Terry well, we, Russell, we, we can only hope. Yeah. We can only hope. Terry Russell, you're going to make Dominic Dean's night tonight. He's 51 tomorrow. You're going to both wish him a happy birthday. Yeah, I saw that. Congratulations, Dom. Nice to see you. 51. Well, guys, we've really enjoyed... Dominic. I wish I was 61. <laughs> <laughs> we've really enjoyed going back, looking back on this. Thank you. know, we've got it on the shirt this season, four years of the UEFA Cup. So, 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 you know, Colin and Graham, fantastic memories. Me and Rich wish we could have been in that crowd with you. But like Terry and Russell, just to finish us off, you think back now, 40 years on, what are your sort of overlasting memories? So, you know, Sir Bobby no longer with us, the beat no longer with us. What kind of your 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 standout memories of that campaign? Well, of that campaign, uh, I think a lot of it was the trips home after the away legs. Yeah. You know, the, the games, the games it's hard to remember what actually went on in the games, and it just seemed that. Even when the going got tough, we had enough character in that squad to uh, to get a result when we needed one. And there's a lot of travelling being done that season, uh, especially in the European games. And we were very respectful of each other, respect from the players to the staff and the directors. And the staff and the directors showed that same sort of respect to the players. So we had a very good bond between us all, travelling as a group. And the directors travelled with uh, the players a heck of a lot. And the press boys did then. And uh, every night was a party night on the way home. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds fantastic. Terry, anything to add? Well, if you look at the tally, we, it's four, obviously 42 league games, 12 UEFA Cup games, 7 FA Cup games, 5 League Cup games. So we, you know, we certainly had a right go at it, that's for sure, that season, with, with a very limited squad. But I think just to be part of um, the three, well, be a member of the team, um, there's three great teams of Ipswich, obviously the championship side, 62, 61, 62, whatever it is, and then 78 and then 81. To be a member of that, those three clubs that, that, are, that have produced the best football Ipswich has ever seen, I think that was a real special honour for us to be in that in that select group uh, of players. Um, and I think it, you know we'd love to see the good times back. I hopefully now this new um, uh, the, the, the new owners can can you know get us going again. Um, but as as Russell says, you know the the camaraderie, the spirit. 
um, I must we must say a big hello to to Paul Marin as well. He was very ill at the moment, and um, you know, I, let's hope he's he's better yeah. and he's and he's doing okay. But he is very ill, and you know, all this. I saw him this uh, afternoon, and, Terry, and he sends his. Thoughts. Yeah, he said, yeah, I him, yeah, I saw him the other day. He's, he's he's you know he's it's so tough when you see one of your teammates, and he was one of the toughest players. You'll ever play against and, and play with. And he was a real leader, um, a real man, a real man amongst men. But you know, we hopefully, hopefully he'll uh, he'll he'll be comfortable and he'll be okay. But um, it's not looking good for him. But you know, just teammates, fans, the whole of Ipswich, the whole of Suffolk, and Ipswich fans throughout the world just you know came together that season really, really well. Um, and it's it's just to be to be part of that journey, as what people like to call it, is just immense. Yeah. Terry, can I just add something there, please? Go for it, Colin. Apart, uh, apart from Ray Crawford, obviously, Paul Mariner, and I know he's been seriously ill, and I, oh my God, my heart goes out to him and his family. PM, as I used to always call him. Yeah, yeah. PM, PM was the ultimate centre forward. He had absolutely everything, that bloke. I'll tell you what, you two know that. He had a good left foot. He had a good, he had a tremendous right foot. He was strong. He was one of the one of the best headers of a ball in the club. Um, and, he, and, 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 and I'd say he was arguably one of the best strikers with his back to goal the club's ever had. He was very, very strong. I mean, fantastic set forward, and 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 he, I think he won thirty something England caps. Um, I think he should have won a few more of that personally, but um, no, my heart goes out to him and his family. Fantastic striker, and um, and um, yeah, I just I just pray for him really. He was a fantastic player. I'll tell you, argu arguably, arguably, apart from maybe Alan Hunter, arguably one of the best buys, but well, pound for pound, when he got in from Plymouth, arguably yeah. one of Bobby's best, best, best signers. I'd say, yeah, wouldn't you yeah, say, yeah, Russell? Yeah, very much so. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. 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 Good Absolutely. comment. Well, great, guys, great comment. Guys, on behalf of all the Talkie Town community, all the Sound fans that are tuning in from around the globe. I want to say thank you very much for giving up your time to come and celebrate the UEFA Cup 40 years with us. Really appreciate it. Absolute gentlemen. Um, drop by and see us again. It's been absolutely fantastic. We've seen all the comments down the side. People have absolutely loved it. So thank you very much for giving us the honour to, to speak to you about such great times in Ipswich Town Club history. Yeah. One, one word of advice. Re rehydration. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to give we're going to a quick shout out to our sponsors, Mass Creations, Away Day Bears. The butcher's bandage. Be like, there's yeah. got to be a Russell Osman beer coming soon, Russell. It's got to be. Big shout out to Graham Adventures of a Tractor Boy. I think I'll be back. To, is the show back tomorrow? 8.30, Rich? Back tomorrow, 8, yeah. 8 p.m. Martin's got uh, the Fleetwood preview. I think there's a guy from Bristol City coming on to talk about Mark Ashton and uh, the new sports science guy. So tune into that. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you soon. Thanks very much. No problems as far as fitness is concerned in the Ipswich lineup. Franz Tyson and Paul Mariner both came through tests all right. Indeed, the only difficulty Ipswich have had is uh, for Muran and Tyson to get enough of the best seats for their many fans and admirers and family uh, relations and so on who want to see this match. And indeed, the fact that eight Ipswich players got stuck in a lift going down to get the team coach to come to the stadium. But those minor problems apart, they're in good spirits.